I'm still in off-season mode. Let me see if I remember how to do this. Hey everyone, Steve Dangle here. I, I make videos about lots of hockey things, mostly the Leafs. Um, and, and I haven't made one in a very long time. The last one was about Pierre Engvall re-signing. And not, not a lot has changed uh, since then. Oh, oh, this? I got a tattoo! Look at that! I, I got one! There it is! It's my first one. Really hurt. Wanna see something else cool? Oh God, it's dusty. This sketch right here of Felix Potvin, the person who made this sketch for me that's been in my room for years, like since I was in my parents' house, that's who did this tattoo! Livia Sang on Instagram. She's amazing. Let me put this, oh God. Oh, this is what happens when I take things off the wall mid-video. Is it? No! Did it? No! Did, yeah. Is it? Yeah. All right. So here's what happens every year. Every single year. I don't do the summer properly. Like I look forward to it and then it arrives and then free agency makes it weird. Cause there's like a big free agency day, but it's not over after that, is it? Even though it's looked at as the end, sort of the unofficial end of the hockey season, it, it keeps going and it trickles. And sometimes there's a big day and you go, wow, that was a big day. And then Johnny Gaudreau signs at the end of the day and it's with Columbus and you're like, what the hell? And you're like, oh, the flames are screwed. And then all of a sudden the flames are very not screwed and lots and lots has happened. How does this affect the Leafs? We'll discover that. First, football is back. The Blue Jays are gunning for a playoff spot and the NHL season is right around the corner. All the action starts at Sports Interaction, Canada's sportsbook. Bet before the game, live in play are one of our many prop bets. Doing it right since 1997, Sports Interaction makes it easy to deposit, play, and cash out. Join now and see all sports betting has to offer. Head to sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn. That's sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn. As always, remember it's 19 plus and please play responsibly. Well, what I do every year is once free agency fizzles out, I sort of go, isn't this great that I'm on vacation? And that lasts for about a week. And then my life has no purpose and I don't know what to do with myself. And that lasts for about a month and a half. This year? No, no, I just sort of enjoyed myself. That was great. And that has left me really energized for this season because by not thinking the Leafs into oblivion all summer, I'm actually all fresh for this year. I don't need to shout at you for this part, but I am, I'm excited. And I have a significant thing to tell you, but I'm not gonna tell you just yet. I'm gonna make you wait for the first episode of the Steve Dangle podcast after the summer break. That is September 6th. Oh my gosh, I can't wait till September 6th. That is next week. It's the first day of school. Oh no. Don't worry, one day you won't have to do it anymore. And trust me, it's great. I'm not saying school's bad. I'm just saying not having to go to school anymore is not Bad. So anyway, I asked some questions. They're about the Leafs, so let's answer them. <laughs> Craig Morgan, any takeaways from your postseason therapy session? You know, there's something about a close seven game series loss to the Tampa Bay Lightning and then the Lightning go on to the Stanley Cup final en route to a potential three-peat that ended up falling short. But there's something about that that requires so much less therapy than blowing a 3-1 series lead to the Montreal Canadiens. So this summer I was actually good. No, like I had time to mourn the Leafs like throughout the rest of the playoffs and by the time the summer arrived, I was good. So the, the mental state is, it's, it's, eh, you know, maybe suboptimal like for the normals, but like I'm, ah, this is, I'm better than last summer. We'll leave it at that. Wesley says, no, I don't have any questions. Just how were your holidays? Uh, really good. I got this tattoo and no, it's not meant to be like Austin Matthews or, or Patrick Laine. It's just people like lions, man. I also just, I wanted one. I wanted one and I'm covered in moles as you might've noticed. And this is one of the only places where there weren't any. So that's why I started there. Probably gonna go like there and maybe a little here. And then I think I'll be done. And everyone who's ever gotten tattoos is like, oh, you think so, huh? Rented a cottage with uh, my wife and son and I told you this was gonna be about the Leafs. Stop it! Where's the prospect pyramid, Steven? You didn't put that last part. I just, it's when, it's like when my parents are mad. Prospect pyramid is coming soon. I've already started plans for it. Stop it! It's still technically August at the time I'm shooting that. You're gonna see it September 1st. You're, you're in the future. Do they have flying cars in the future? Sorry, that's unreasonable. Is Union Station finished? Even more unreasonable. Why do you keep doing this to yourself? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's fun. How excited will you be when Spezza unretires in January for one more kick at the can? Oh yeah. 
Yeah, no. You know, you know that saying, don't. Don't give me hope. Yes, yes, give me hope. I want that! I want that so bad! And if any of you right now are like, we don't need him, we have a fourth line center and right winger and I don't care if he's a goalie! I will have Jason Spezza as the e-bug. I will have him sitting on the bench with all the pads just to say I've seen it. Are you ready to hurt again? That's the thing, Rob. I'm always ready to hurt. And after getting a three hour inner bicep tattoo, the Leafs can bring it on! Who are the goalies again? Still Campbell, right? Is it Campbell? How good do you think they'll be this season? Here's the funny thing. It feels like if your team is not getting better, they're getting worse. And with the Leafs, I feel like they haven't, as of yet, because there's still lots of time left in this off season, don't forget. There's about six weeks before the first game of the season on October 12th, that's a Wednesday. It feels like if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. And the, Le the Leafs have, you know, tinkered, basically, tinkered. Everyone's waiting for, like, a Sandine contract, and we'll get to that. Is Justin Hall going to get traded, and we'll get to that. And Alex Kerfoot going to get traded, and we'll get to that. And a potential Jake Muzzin deal, and we'll get to that. And there are some concerns with the goaltending, and, yeah, the goaltending is looking a little spotty. But last year, the Leafs' goaltending was a little spotty, so... What I think for the Leafs, because the Atlantic is so good and the Eastern Conference is so good, it's possible they'll struggle a bit. I think they'll struggle at times. But because of how even it is and because of how good the Leafs are and how strong of a regular season team they are, and you can't deny that they're a good regular season team, I think that not only is there a chance they compete for the division, I think there's a chance they compete for the Eastern Conference, and I think there's a chance the Leafs compete for the President's Trophy. I really do. Even with the goaltending and all. That promises them nothing the second the regular season ends, but I think it's possible. Next, SDPN. Just want to have something to listen to from a UK viewer. Well, you're getting two things confused. The SDP is the Steve Dangle podcast. SDPN is just SDPN. That's It doesn't actually stand for anything, and I, that's important to note. It's just those four letters. You might be like, no, it obviously means, and no, it doesn't. Like, it legally documented does not. I was there when we registered the bit. I'm, I'm a CEO in the business, one of three. It's It doesn't mean that. Anyway, the next SDP will be September 6th. There's a brand new Chris Johnston show that dropped yesterday, I think? It's got Sandine in the title. I just listened to it. It's really good. It was the main... Shut up, I'm making a video. It was the main inspiration for this video so you can you can check that out if you're looking for a new sdpn if you're looking for a new sdp september 6th here we go let's get into the meat of it what do you think is the leafs most likely next move as they still need to sign sandine and make cap space this is a great question but it does seem like one thing and it's technically two the leafs do need to sign sandine that is true the Leafs do need to free up cap space because according to Cap Friendly, they are 1.493, let's let's say $1.5 million over the cap. That's also with a roster of 14 forwards, 6D, and 2 goalies. So they're not carrying any extra D, they're not carrying any extra goalies. They are carrying two extra forwards. Could they send one or two of them down to alleviate the cap concerns for the time being? Yes, they could. But that's not very comfortable, and the Leafs' October is awful. They're going to need to carry extra forwards because they're going on the road. Actually, let's take a moment to talk about that for a second. Because while I do think the Leafs are going to have a good season, I do think there's a chance they stumble out of the gate. And remember, they stumbled out of the gate last season. They weren't very good. They were sort of 500 through 12 games before almost going undefeated in November. I believe they had 14 wins. That's 28 points. You're, you're more than a quarter of the way to a playoff spot at that point. But their October is they start with three games and four nights. And they begin with a back-to-back -back with travel. They begin on the road in Montreal. The next night, they host the Washington Capitals. And they end the three games and four nights on Saturday at home against the Ottawa Senators. Then they host the Arizona Coyotes, get a couple days off, host the Dallas Stars, before going on a five-game road trip that lasts over a week. The Jets, the Golden Knights, the Sharks, the Kings, the Ducks. And the Kings and Ducks is a back-to-back Saturday-Sunday. That is an awful start to the season that's a really really bad october but anyway point being you better have 
room for extras on your roster at very least before you go on that five game road trip and that five game road trip is only a small handful of games into the season. LTIR can help with the cap situation someone needs to get hurt first and you shouldn't be cheering for that. Uh, the Leafs should have a cap compliant team that's not cap compliant because of injuries. It's just not a great way to be. It's difficult on management and also it's difficult on the team. Like who are you looking at on the team and you're like, oh, well, I hope I hope they get hurt so they make cap space. You're not thinking that because you're a good person. More realistically, they got to make a trade. Justin Hall off the roster would be just about perfect, except no, he wouldn't be. Because you're like, okay, Justin Hall makes $2 million. Trade him out for a pick. That frees up $2 million. You get half a million dollars in cap space. Wait a sec. You got to sign Rasmus Sandin. So Sandin is a little intertwined with all this. You would think the Leafs most likely next move would be to move out Alexander Kerfoot at 3.5 million, but I also feel like at 3.5 million, what's the harm in keeping him? He plays the power play, he plays the penalty kill, he plays in the top six, he can play in the bottom six, he can play center, he can play wing. And I think the reason he's still on the team is the Leafs have come to the same conclusion. Yes, we could trade this player, but also, what if we didn't? Which brings me to Rasmus Sandin. The Leafs do not have to free up cap space for Rasmus Sandin because the Leafs do not have to sign Rasmus Sandin. And I think this is important. And this is why you should listen to the most uh, recent episode of the Chris Johnston show on SDPN. Because they talk about the whole saga and you'll know that restricted free agent Rasmus Sandin and the Leafs are talking contract right now and as of yet they haven't come to a contract no one has offered an offer sheet that could still happen i believe we just passed the anniversary of the uh Kockiniemi offer sheet which was a later in the summer offer sheet last year the season ended much later so it wasn't as late sandine's representation lewis gross is the same agent who the leafs got into a spat with over the William Nylander contract, which you'll remember went all the way to December. So I'll say this, I love Rasmus Sandin. He's a great player. He's gonna be an even better player. He's got some snarl. He's got great offensive instincts. He's only gonna get better. I think he's gonna be a great player in this league. I hope he is a Leaf for a long time and even forever. That being said, I want Kyle Dubas to be a little selfish on this one. And here's what I mean by that. Whether Dubas is the Leafs GM for a long time, or he gets fired, even if he gets fired, the Leafs go down in total flames and he gets fired. He's gonna get a job somewhere else. His career will continue. John Ferguson Jr. had an awful tenure with the Toronto Maple Leafs and he was older than Dubas is now. And he's had a job basically ever since. He's, he's on the Coyotes right now. He was with the Bruins for a really long time. He's been in the league. He was able to get another job. Whether Dubas gets fired this year or not, he is going to have an NHL career that long outlasts this particular job. And for that reason, if Rasmus Sandin and his agent are not willing to meet Kyle Dubas where Kyle Dubas needs them to be for the team, he needs to let them rot. Rot. Sit there and wait. Now, on Agent Provocateur with Alan Walsh, there have been lots of discussions about you know, RFAs and how little power they have, etc., etc. You'd never know that based on how negotiations have gone with the Leafs in the past, but you're forgetting a few things. William Nylander's strength in his negotiation is he was firmly part of the Leafs' top six. He was basically Austin Matthews' right-hand man for the first few years of his career, don't forget. Mitch Marner, forget about it. He was the better player, He's definitely Matthew's right-hand man. He was, uh, you know, a proven future 100-point guy in this league, a future star. They were integral parts of this team. Off the top of my head, who's the Leafs' defense? Riley, let's say Brody, Muzzin, Lilligren, Giordano, Hall, something like that. It's fine. That's fine. There are things I would do to make it better, but it's fine. With Rasmus Sandin, we are not talking about a guy who has a firm roster spot, even. Sandin's played about 80 games in the National Hockey League. His leverage is his skill, how good of a hockey player he is. Problem is, he hasn't played all that much hockey. Now, as Chris Johnson mentioned on the Chris Johnson show, that's not all his fault. 
He had some injuries. There was COVID and seasons were shortened. But unless he's traded or offer sheeted, the Leafs can just make him sit. And then you're not playing hockey. And you're not getting better at hockey. And you're even if you are, you're certainly not showing people you can be better at hockey. Let him sit. Let him sit. Dubas has this reputation for, all right, fine, and just caving in these negotiations. For the longevity of his career, he needs to not do that. And if the December 1st deadline shows up, or maybe they changed it this year, there is a deadline sometime in December where if you don't have a player signed by that date, they cannot play for your team that year. If that date comes, let it go. You're not playing this year. Oops. I don't think it's going to come to that. And if it does, so be it. One thing I think we need to learn, though, with Kyle Dubas is expect the unexpected. We keep thinking it's going to be Kerfoot. We keep thinking it's going to be Hall. I think it's going to be something that we're not seeing. We're just not seeing it yet. And this is usually where I would turn to, like, Earl Schwartz's Twitter account, but the Hurricanes just answered him because they take everything from us! So I, I don't know. What's the lowest of lows we can expect for this season? So I mentioned that I expect the Leafs to potentially struggle out of the gate three games in four nights. They can potentially start like 0-3, something like that. And you lose to the Habs maybe, you lose to the Ottawa Senators, two divisional rivals in there, that's gonna hurt. Then you got the long Western road trip and people are already doubting Matt Murray and people are already doubting Ilya Samsonov and not loving the goalie tandem and the low point could come around Halloween and there are going to be headlines like oh Sunday scaries or something like that I, I don't know but I think the low point of the season comes from a lack of winning it comes from a lack of stopping pucks but I think it happens early in the season and they overcome it why is Hall still a Leaf because he's not a bad player he's a decent player he's a decent player who's good at certain things and bad at certain things I think he's a decent player in transition uh, and a bad player in front of his own net. Now you might say that's a bit of a concern for a defenseman and you would be absolutely correct, but he's a leaf for a reason and right-handed defensemen don't grow on trees and they certainly don't for $2 million. Which by the way, makes the Lilligren contract so, so good. When will they start falling from the trees? It's a leaf joke. Actually, it, they already have in some places, it makes me sad. But I don't think that's because of autumn coming around the corner. I think that's because, like it, some of the trees I've seen, it's because the leaves burnt because it's been so hot. Patrick Kane, yay or nay? This was another thing talked about on the CJ show. You'll definitely have to listen to this part, but this is a rumor, uh, like Patrick Kane to the Leafs. This is a rumor that I don't know its origins, and by the sounds of it, it's a rumor that doesn't have any origins in reality. So I'm not sure it's even worth talking about. Like that seems like a summer thing. Here's a star player with a year left on his contract. How does this affect the Leafs? And I think ultimately the answer is it doesn't. Unless he goes to like a rival who <laughs> they have to play in the playoffs or something. Uh, I think the Blackhawks are going to trade him. I don't think he's going to end the season with that team, but how the hell are the Leafs going to get him? I don't think that makes any sense. How many nights have you lost thinking about goaltending? Again, I told you I've been doing much better this too. And there, I, I think, I think that's all I got. Drew, is that good? You, you're not in the room with me? You're still right. Yeah, we do live kind of far. Well, I'll start making videos again, uh, more frequently. Um, I'll find reasons to make videos, um, uh, uh, if the Leafs don't give us reasons, but I think they're going to. I think they're going to. I think we're going to be talking about players a lot more. Sandine, a trade, perhaps. Um, preseason is coming up. Oh my goodness, preseason is coming up. Training camp is coming up. Ooh, what's going to be the goofy thing that we talk about at a training camp? I bet it's going to be dumb. Something's going to happen. I can't wait to see what it is. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really like to tell all your friends. Once again, SDPN, the brand new Chris Johnston show. If you want to hear about that Kane stuff, you want to hear about that Sandine stuff, he's got all the info there. CJ and Julian McKenzie always do an amazing job. And first SDP back after summer vacation, September 6th. That's this upcoming Tuesday. Oh yeah.
very oh yeah. <laughs>